So you're looking for everyday tips? Open the door for another person. The research shows when they check the blood of those three people, and the three people being the person that's opening the door, the person the door's being opened for, and an innocent bystander. Obviously, the person I, I open the door for, their blood chemistry is gonna change because I'm doing something nice for them. My blood chemistry changes because I'm doing something nice for them. But the cool part is, the innocent bystander that isn't even part of that equation is a part of the equation, right? That's the ripple effect you have in life. Opening the door, goes threefold. And if there's other people watching, you're talking about even multitudes of that. What have you done today to open a door? And that might not be a physical door. That might be that you gave someone a pat on the back. It might be you gave them a nice compliment. It might be that you're lifting people up. When you walk down the street and someone says to me, hey, how's it going? I go, great, how's it going for you? Or they'll say hi, and I go, hey, how's it going? They're like, oh, oh, whatever. I'm like, oh, well, wh why not? Why is it not going great? And they're like, oh, geez, this guy actually cares? Yeah, because I actually am making a meaningful connection with people, and I truly want to know, like, how is today going? And if it's not going good, how could I help you to help turn that day around? I surround myself with great people. I surround myself with my daughters. I surround myself with my friends. And they're not going to allow me to, to be in a crappy mood, not for very long anyway, because they know that I'm just feeling sorry for myself. All of us can, but then you pull yourself back out of that. When it comes to that, you need to think about how you're interacting with the rest of the world. Because if all you ever do is think about you and all your problems, then that's all you're going to create is you and your problems, and you're not going to reach out to other people that maybe could be using a helping hand. Another thing would be to give gratitude. Like with, before you go to sleep or when you wake up, in the morning, where there be a gratitude journal where you just start naming some of the things. I'm telling you, when you say it out loud, like writing is cool, but when you say it out loud, if you're gonna write it, then say it, like read it out loud, because when you hear those words of the things that happened that day, the people you're really thankful for, the things that didn't transpire and you were glad for, because something great came from that, or you're asking God or the universe of like, hey, that didn't happen today, what am I supposed to learn from that? Or why didn't that happen today? If I look at that and go, well, what happened today that was good? That's fantastic. And I give thanks to that. But if it didn't happen, it was so good because what, what, what was there? What did I learn from that? What maybe was it serving for me to why it didn't transpire today? Because I've had some stuff like that. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a great example. It's the 2008 Olympic trials. I had been out of practice for 13 years and I applied, didn't get it. I was, was I pissed? Yeah, I was pissed, man. Because I was out 13 years. I was great at what I do. And you know who got it? A guy that had been out for a year. I'm like, he's been out for a year. They told me I didn't have enough experience, but yet he got it. So he's going to the Olympic trials. Okay, no big deal. Fast forward, I have an athlete. She says, hey, do you want to go to the Olympic trials with me? I got this athlete pass. It's an AS pass, athlete support. I'm like, cool, I'll go. Guess how many athletes I ended up treating her? 51. I had people that came to me saying, hey, I've told I have a broken ankle, but you do some magic. Can you take a look at me? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take a look at you. So I take care of this kid, Ian. Ian hasn't run in, in like six or eight weeks. He's been doing some underwater stuff. He's been running in the pool and stuff like that, but he's injured and he's a 5,000 meter runner. I get in and I go, oh dude, your like, foot's just locked up. You know, it's literally like a, an adjustment. Like your foot's not broke. And I adjust him, he gets on, he goes, oh my God, my foot feels great. So what's he do? He goes out to 5,000 meters. This is in Eugene, Oregon, okay? Track Town, USA. He takes off, everyone lets him go. You know why? He coming back, he'd been injured. He has been run for six or eight weeks and he wins the race. Now, here's the cool part. Nah, not so cool. Sad part. His girlfriend comes up and says, oh my God, I had the exact same pain as Ian. Right in the same foot, blah, blah, blah. Can you do that with me? I get in, I touch her, my stomach starts to churn. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And I go, and when I get that, I know something's wrong. Like bad juju, bro. So I said to her, I think you have a fracture in your foot. She goes, what? I go, yeah, I think you have a fracture in your foot. She goes off and then she's coming back and it's time for her race and whatever. I look at her, I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm gonna run. Oh, my coach Dan, I won't use his last name. And let me tell you something about Lieutenant Dan. Dan says you're full of crap. And I go, oh really? And she goes, yeah. She went two laps, pulled out, got an x-ray, had a fractured foot. Be careful of what you wish for, because if I had gone to Olympic trials, I never would have been able to help those athletes. I'll give you another one, even better than that. I'll give you the name, because she, she won't care. Her name's Yvette Lewis. She became a pro after the Olympics. In the 2008 Olympic trials, she's running, she jumps in a long jump pit, she hits the sand, and then she collapses. They're taking her off on a stretcher, and I get this call. He goes, hey, is this Dr. Portman? I go, yeah, and he goes, hey, this is Al Joyner. Okay, now I don't know if any of you know who Al Joyner is, but he's the 1984 gold medalist in the long jump. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome, right? So I'm talking to him, he goes, hey, can you come down and take a look at Yvette? I go, sure, what's going on? And he goes, well, preliminary is that she tore her MCL, partial tear in her MCL, and partial tear in her ankle in the ATFL. So I go, oh yeah, sure, I'll come down there. She's got all this pain in that. Now, you gotta understand, the athlete support side is real small, and there's only like a couple of us, and we're like pariahs, like they're just putting it off to the side. And then all the medical team, all their nice shirts and everything, are all standing to the side, and they all got their arms like this, like, yeah, what's this joker gonna do? Oh, only took 10 minutes, and she's running up and down, and her mom's going, hey, please, Jesus, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, he's a miracle man. And she ran, she ended up running the 200 meters, 
She got third place, so she didn't make the team, but she was an alternate, but she ran a personal best. And without that, without the work that I did, if I had gotten chosen, what I found out later was, if I was chosen, never got to do my voodoo stuff. No way I'd be able to do that stuff because there was a box they were gonna put me in. And so when I was pissed before that, like the year before that, why didn't I get chosen? It came around the next year. That's why I didn't get chosen because then I got to do that stuff with her and with Ian and all these other athletes to help them. Another one's like Travell Quinley. Travell Quinley was from ASU. He's in the Olympic trials and he's got all this pain in his pelvic region. And I treat him and he wins a long jump. Couldn't jump before that. And then there's a guy, uh, Eric Wilson. Eric Wilson couldn't jump. He had stress fractures, three in one side, two in the other. And I treat him, he sets the stadium record and wins the triple jump. But I did stuff outside the box. A matter of fact, there wasn't even a box. I just critically thought about how I would help them prayed for God to help me to, to figure out what was wrong with them so I could help them fulfill their dreams. And you know, I had all these athletes make the Olympic team in 2008 and it was, it was glorious. And it was only because, only because I didn't get chosen to be the team, one of the team Kairos or team docs uh, for the Olympic trials for those athletes.